Hey, welcome to our Pinescript how-tos. Today I'm going to show you how to properly implement a stop loss and a take profit. I know it can get a bit tricky, especially when dealing between percentage and tick conversions and to know where to place everything properly. So let's review all that together. As an example, I consider a very simple training strategy, which uses Bollinger Bands. The signal to enter a long is given when the price crosses above the upper Bollinger Band, while the signal to enter a short is when the price crosses below the lower Bollinger Band. And then the trades are exited whenever there's a crossing of the average Bollinger Band. You can see that these entry conditions are tested here to enter in a trade, while the closing conditions are tested here to close the trades. Now, to add a stop loss, you need to use this strategy exit function that you see here. And let's do a control left click so you can see all the arguments that it supports. There's quite a lot. What we are interested in today is this stop. And later on, I'll tell you about this loss here. What is important to notice for this stop argument is that it requires a specific price. And this is indeed what I fed here as stop equal stop loss price long for the long and the same here for the short. For the computation of a stop loss price in this example, I went for a very standard approach where I set the stop loss for the long to be 5% below the entry price, while for the short it is 5% above the entry price. But indeed, here is where you can replace with whatever your strategy dictates. Just make sure you're giving a price and not a percentage or anything else. Something else I want to bring your attention to is that here in the computation, I have declared at least one number in the division to be a float. So I've added a point here. Equivalently, I could have put a point here and forget about the point here as well. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make sure this division is a float division and not an integer division. Had I put only a 5 here and only a 100 here, TradingView would have done the integer division, which would give you wrong results. So be careful with that and always stick to float divisions, except if you know exactly that you need a integer division. The order in which you write the arguments in this strategy exit function is very important. The first string that you give is simply a description of what this exit is. And notably, this is what you will see in the chart as you can see here sl short because i wrote sl short here then the second argument is also a string but this time this is the identifier of the position which was actually defined at this level here in the strategy entry where you can see the string long being the first argument this is for the program to know which position it should exit and in the same way here which position it should close so this does mean you could write whatever you want here, or you could say one, two, three, provided you are consistent. And then you say that those are also one, two, threes. And finally, you can see that it is only after these two arguments that I plug in my stop loss price here in the stop equal argument. Note that the order of arguments defined with an equal doesn't matter between them, but you always have to put them after the arguments that don't have an equal. Okay, let's now quickly have a look at how a stop loss looks like on the chart. You can see that this short was entered at this level here, but unfortunately the price went up. So the trigger of the stop loss happened at this level here, given by this pink arrow here. You can see that if I reduce my stop loss, make it tighter and say a three instead of a 5%, you can see that now the arrow did indeed go down accordingly and the stop loss was triggered sooner. Great, so we've covered the initial and simpler method to implement a stop loss. However, if you're considering a take profit as well, there is a more unified approach to setting both of them. Let's have a look. Adding a take profit is also done via this strategy.exit function, but this time with the profit argument. And you can note that this profit target should be given in ticks. Now, if you're giving the take profit in ticks, you might as well do the same for your stop loss. And that is why you can use this loss argument where the stop loss you can see needs to be specified in ticks as well. So let me show you how you can convert your prices into ticks. You simply take the distance to the level you're considering. So either the stop loss or the take profit and you divide that by sim.mintic. 
So here I am thinking in terms of a long, so the distance to a stop loss is going to be the entry price minus the stop loss price. This distance is going to give me a positive number. While for the take profit, it is the take profit price minus the entry price. And that is also going to give me a positive distance. In this example, I kept the previous computation of the stop loss price with the percent difference. And for the take profit, what I did is to simply consider a risk reward ratio that I defined here to be two in this case. But it is indeed here where you can come and plug in whatever your strategy dictates. Then with the stop loss and take profit in ticks computation at hand, you can come and plug them in the strategy exit. You can see that it is done after the identifier again, where I plug in the stop loss in this loss argument and the take profit in this profit argument. You can also see that with this approach, the name to give to the exit that you want to see on the chart needs to be given with the comment loss for the stop loss and with a comment profit for the take profit. Something very important here is that I fed the exact same quantities in the case of a short as in the case of the long. The reason for that is that in this strategy example that I'm using here, I am using the exact same method to compute the take profit and stop loss for the long and for the short. They are simply symmetrically reversed around the entry price. However, if your strategy uses a different method or different indicators to set stop loss take profit for the shorts as compared to stop loss take profit for the longs, then you would have to come and feed here the different computation. But very important, what you plug in here and here must always be positive numbers. In other words, always make sure that the distance that you compute here and the distance that you compute here is done in such a way that they give positive numbers. And also, always check afterwards that indeed things make sense. For example, then the stop loss of a short is always triggered at the level above the entry price and oppositely for a long. All right, we successfully tackled how to set up both a take profit and a stop loss. Now, a word of caution though, I need to share with you about the placements of these objects, because if not done carefully, you might end up doing a common mistake. Let me explain. You might have noticed so far that I always put the strategy exit line just after the strategy entry line, both in their corresponding if condition. But you might be wondering, why did I do that? And why would I simply not put them at the end like this? Well, this would be the wrong approach for a standard take profit and stop loss. Because doing it in this way here, what would happen is that at each candle, the strategy exit, so the stop loss and take profit would re-update itself. While doing it in the approach that I've showed you so far, what happens is that the take profit and the stop loss is computed once and for all just after the entry meaning using the levels and the entry price, etc., that were the case at the candle when the entry was triggered, which is how you compute a take profit and a stop loss. But indeed, if you went for a trailing stop loss now, then the strategy exit should be put outside of the ifs, like so, but then you would have to implement properly the computation of the trailing. But this will be for another video. Anyway, I'll put all these codes on our GitHub so you can grab them for free if you need them. Links below. If you found this helpful, don't forget a little like and consider subscribing too. Until next time, take care.